Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Ask the Pros Business, where we bring entrepreneurs, business people on the show. They come on the show, you know, to tell us, you know, how how they've done their business. You know, in a way, trying to just create a path for us, you know, strategies as well, you know, just telling us, you know, I've done this, I've done that, you know, and you can all also do this as well. You know, and on this particular show, you know, I've got Didi here. Didi is all the way from South Africa, guys, you know, and this, this entrepreneur, you know, he, 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 don't, he doesn't believe in business plan. You know, his, his, his motto is fire the business plan, you know, and on this, you know, Didi is going to tell us, you know, how he started, you know, and how he started his business as well, you know, and Didi on this show, you know, we always start from the beginning, which means, you know, telling us how you started for you. How did the journey start for you? Hey, first up, you know, it's such an honor to be here on Ask the Pros. Um, Yes, Thank my you. journey started, literally started when I was seven years old. Um, and I started then, my mom, we, we, were, we, we grew up in a rural area, so it's very much a farm area. Um, but my mom had a lot of friends in town, and I started repotting their pot plants. So that's where I got started with my little business. And, and, and the way I made money was when I repotted the pot plants, I would take the offsets and I would repot that in other pots and then resell it. So that was my sort of introduction to entrepreneurship. Uh, and then after school and everything, you know, I got involved in horticulture. And then we started the first potted herb growing operation in South Africa. That was way back in 1980. Mm -hmm. um, so giving away my age, I've uh, been an entrepreneur full time for about 40 years now, four decades. Wow, um, and in in those those four decades, you 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 start learning what works and what doesn't work, and where you're wasting time and where you don't waste time. So that's <laughs> that's that's the long the long short of it. <laughs> yeah, did it, but what, what what is your take on entrepreneurs back those days, you know, and now and the present time now? You know, what what, what do you think? What do you think is the difference? You know, what do you see? You know, it, that that makes entrepreneurs back in the days. And that entrepreneurs now, you know, what's, what's the difference? You know, what set them apart? Sure, that's a very nice question. I think what sets, sets us apart is that in, in those days, it was even before things like cell phones, fax machines. So it was a lot more not connected than it is today. And I think... Thinking back, you know, I, I actually like the question. I, I, I think thinking back, it was probably easier then uh, than it is now because there's so much distraction now. <laughs> you know, in, in, in those days, um, we, yeah, we, we didn't even have full-time 24 hours television in South Africa at that stage. Um, so um, I, I really think, see now it was easier than it is today. Um, in, 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 in a lot of in a lot of ways, and, and it likes of social media as well. You know, like like you said, no no distraction. The, there was mm. there was no social media. There was no in, like internet was kind of like limited. You know, to say you know, no. so so you 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 in invariably you're saying that people tend to focus on their craft more than now, right? Absolutely, and I think you, you you're hitting it on the nail on the head there. I think we, we focused more on our craft. We, we focused more on building relationships with people. Um, I mean, the first real business, the, the herb growing operation that we started, I started that as a family business with my parents. Um, and uh, our whole philosophy was building relationships with, with nurseries. We, we decided we're going to do a wholesale operation, you know, a wholesale growing operation. Um, and, and the whole focus was going out and building up relationships uh, with people and mentors. And it was easier, uh, again, because there wasn't all the distractions like we had today. You know, when you walked out in, in another person's business, they were happy to see you. And, they, you know, they were uh, inviting and, um, and, and, and do, it, do, it, do it today. You know, people are busy and they're sitting on their cell phones and they're watching their computer screens and... <laughs> Um, you know, you, uh, you, you have to do like we do, burn the, burn the, burn the business plan to get their attention, you know. Hey, absolutely, Didi, you know. And now, internet is here, social media is here, there's loads of distractions. So for you now, how, how does it feel to be 
badass preneur for you right now? Another good question. The way we would like to approach this is that, you know, you, you need to focus these days. You need to be very clear about your purpose. And once you're very clear about your purpose, you need to set out and decide on what one thing am I going to be good at? Because you see, oh, there's so many distractions, even in our own businesses, you know, then we're on this and then we're on that and then we jump to that and then we jump to that. And I think being badass about it is deciding for yourself, listen, I don't care what the rest of the world say, but I'm going to choose this one thing and I'm going to be the best that I can in my tribe. I doesn't, you know, somebody gave me a simple piece of arithmetic the other day. You need today as an artist or as an entrepreneur, you need to have a tribe or you can have a tribe of only between a hundred and a thousand people and you can make a good living. Now, if there's 7 billion people on planet earth, a hundred a thousand people is something like 0 0.0001 of the population. Yep. So, and I think that's being badass about it. You don't need this millions. You know, people, we, we, we fall in the strap of, you know, you, you need to have 10,000 Facebook fans and 100,000 Instagram fans. And, and, you know, fans doesn't translate into money. Um, not necessarily. So it's easier to be, hey, let me use another example. It's like in our families. I mean, in, in our family, it's a small tribe. Build those, it's, it's one on one relationships. And, and being badass about all of this is doing exactly the same in your business. Choose who you want to serve and just be world class and be the best you can for that small community. And then I think you win. Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I know, I, I know your, your theme is about, you know, helping small businesses and. What what is the moonshot? You know the moonshot thinking. You know how how does that help small businesses? Look, the moonshot thinking comes with each each one of us in business have to choose our hill. You know where we want to go. You know the, the hill that we want to climb, and 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 that's the moonshot. And and what we say with that is that once we once we once you've decided on what that hill is, and let me use a simple example. Let's take for your business and you say to yourself I want to start this business and I want to run a business and let's just use a simple figure of I want to earn 10,000 pounds or dollars or whatever it is a month so, and, and what we say with Moonshot is what if you've got that 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 is your big vision and with Moonshot thinking all you all you have to do is add one zero at the end so instead of saying I'm going to earn 10,000 a month and that's that kind of thinking that's saying you're going to go 10 times bigger instead of just 10% bigger. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I, I know you're also in the, in, the, in, the, in the health and wellness business as well, you know. In your course mm. of your journey, you know, starting your business, you know, and, and, and owning your craft, you know, what, what is, how, how do you digress into, 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 into health? Why, why, why healthcare and well-being instead of other professions? Yeah, I think, Kisina, again, a very good question because I think for us, it was sort of a natural progression. Uh, we were growing, we were growing herbs um, and we were, you know, as a wholesale operation. So we were distributing to, to, to retail outlets. But what we found at that stage in South Africa specifically was that now, people didn't know what we were trying to do and why we were selling them herbs, um, you know, um, because a lot of the herbs that we were growing at that stage, um, and that was our main interest, was culinary herbs. So, you know, we, we, were, we were cooks. We, we like to, to cook our own meals, and we used them in the kitchen. Um, and now we were selling them. And so we started to educate people about how to use herbs. Um, and then... It just progressed from that, you know, because once you st started teaching people how to cook with them, they would say to you, but, but wait a minute, these herbs also have medicinal qualities. Um, and that was sort of a natural progression. And then in South Africa, we actually have a lot more traditional healers. The statistics say that we have about 30,000 medical doctors, but we have more than 200,000 herbalists, traditional healers. 
Um, and then we started in 2004, we started and founded a company called the SA Herb Academy. And what the Herb Academy main aim at that stage was just giving people the basic skills to use herbs medicinally in, in a safe and, and, and a responsible way. You know, just taking care of yourself and your family. But then these herbalists you know, in South Africa, we call them inyangas. Some of these inyangas came to us and said, listen, um, for me, it's a calling, but I, I hear what you're doing in, in Western herbalism. And I would like to, to learn, you know, how, how's the dip approach different and how can, can I use it in my own business? And it was sort of a natural progression because then, and it was one-on-one -on -one, uh, <clears throat> because that's the way it works with, with, with the call to you uh, philosophy. <clears throat> and so we started, you know, I, I like to call it retooling them so that they can use the Western herbalism philosophy as well. Um, and being an entrepreneur, you know, it wasn't long before I said, oh, wait a minute, there's a business here. There's a possibility here so that we, you, you can, we can do it and we can scale it a little bit better and do it a lot more professional by, you know, just running it as a business. Um, and, and that's how sort of, and it's still, it's still my, my soft spot and it's my passion. Uh, I'm still the principal of the SAOB Academy. Uh, I, I, external examination moderator. I still love the time I spend there because um, the, the, the way that herbalism works, it's, it's preventative. Uh, and I think it's, 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 there's a lot of, after COVID, there's a lot more awareness for, you know, looking after yourself and not waiting for somebody else to, to look after you. Uh, and that's the whole philosophy. And uh, the Global Wellness Institute, their, their big moonshot vision is a world free of preventable disease. Uh, and the herbalist, they fit 100% into this. So, you know, that's everything for us ties together. Um, and then the next step was, you know, once we started retooling these people, these herbalists, some of them come back and say, okay, now I've got, I, I know how to do this, but now can you help me run a business? You know, I want to make uh, a decent living from this. Um, and that's actually where Bad Aspreneurs was born then, because then we said, okay, again, there's, a, there's an opportunity here. Uh, so let's help these guys and let's help them set up their businesses, um, use the tools that some of us hate, you know, the social media, et cetera. But, you know, it's part and parcel of who we are these days. Uh, and again, you know, not that not one of the, the good things or the opportunities that COVID has brought us all is that, it made everybody more acceptable to the whole Zoom thing and the whole online thing. Um, and where, you know, 18 months ago, you had to explain to somebody, you know, if you wanted to go on a Zoom call. Uh, now everybody knows exactly what it is and nobody is scared of it, you know. So uh, it's a big plus for, for, for those entrepreneurs. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Um, Didi, you know, in, in the course of building that business, that, that herbal business, you know, but what, what, what would you say were the major challenges you faced when, when it comes to herbal medicine and modern medicine? Because they are two different things. One is traditional, you know, and the other one is, is kind of like a modern scientific technology-wise. What would you say are the difficulties you faced in, in terms of trying to you know, teach these herbalists, you know, the modern way of doing business and uh, so that they can able to put that kind of entrepreneurial kind of skills within that business. I, I think I actually nailed one thing on the head again there because for, for most of them, because it's a calling, they, they tend to stand back from the business side of, of the whole practice that they're running. So um, they actually, they actually, some of them have a mental block or even feel ashamed of asking people for money because, you know, for them, it's a calling and they, they want to help people and they want to, to make people feel better. So I, I think that's the first thing that's different between the two modalities is that for many of the herbalists, um, they don't see it as a business. Um, and because of that, many of them are living below minimum wage levels. They, they, they're struggling to make ends meet. 
Um, and it's not because people are not prepared to pay. People are prepared to pay for their services, but it's because their mindset is of such a nature that they don't want to charge people. So that's the first thing that we start with them is, you know, to, and, and we, we start with mindset. We don't start with business. You know, we start with, with the person himself or herself and, and we help them and, and help them to see that, you know, actually you are doing yourself and your profession a discredit if you are not asking what you're worth. Um, and for some of them, they click immediately. Others are like myself, you know, I'm stubborn when it comes to things like, like that. Um, so it takes a little bit longer, but most of them at the end of the day realize that if you, if you really want to help people, you, you need them to understand that they need to value your service. And then the next thing where, where there's a big difference is that um, most of the herbalists are focused on prevention. Um, so, and not not on curing the symptoms so uh, it's a it's a different approach <clears throat> and we actually use it to their advantage because we try and set them up with a local clinic because that's our main sort of medicine you know the the, the, the traditional medicine or, or, or the contemporary medicine format that we have in south africa is through the clinics so we try and set them up with the clinic so that they work hand in hand with them because there's a lot of synergy um, and they can work together. Um, and it's not easy always, but once we, we, we got that set up, then, then we actually set them up with, with fines through the, through the clinics. Um, but it's a one-on-one -on -one person's casino, you know. Uh, you have to sit with each and every one of them and look at their surroundings and where they come from. And, uh, you know, some of them are, are, are working in areas where there's not even internet. There's no internet reception. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. they have to go into what we call a township. They have to go into the township, go and sit down in the internet cafe. And then only then do they actually have access to, to, to internet. So the, the challenges is humongous. Um, but and that's another thing. You've been in South Africa. You know, we, we are very entrepreneurial. Uh, and... Uh, we, we do everything with a smile. That's the other thing, you know. So it's actually very nice to work with these people uh, and, and to, to try and help them and just set up a business and, and, and get going and make a difference in their own lives. Yeah, nice one, Didi, you know. Well, being, being, a, being a successful, you know, health and awareness coach, you know, what separates you from, from the pack to say, you know, what, what makes you different, you know, to other guys that are probably doing the same thing we, we, as you're doing? I think what makes us different is that we've chosen from the start, you know, and I think it's going back to my roots and what, what I've learned from my parents when we started the, the, the growing operation is um, to, to, to not be a mass market thing, to focus on staying small um, and rather work with, with fewer people, but giving them a better service. Um, and, and, and I think that's the problem that a lot of people have is that everybody wants to be this huge massive business uh, and what gets lost in the process is, is, the, is the personal relationships um, I, I mean a simple example of this me and you sitting here and chatting um, you, you, you can't scale this um, because you can't scale one on one uh, and, and I don't want to scale it so I'd rather stay, stay small I'd rather diversify or when I when we decide to, to, to grow a little bit bigger train coaches to do exactly what I can do in other words the EMF Michael Gerber franchise stroke prototype thinking rather do that when we get there but um, just in short to answer you one on one stay personal yeah, nice, nice one, Diddy man. Love that, you know. But I also also saw that, you know, apart from you know your health and wellness thing, you know, you also started a podcast as well, which 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 is which is started pre pretty pretty recently, you know. Why do you think of hmm. having a podcast alongside your business? You've got very good questions. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, two reasons. The first the first one is is that it gives me gives us an opportunity to reach out to people all over the world. Uh, again, you, you're a good example. Uh, you know, you've welcomed us with open arms. 
um, and, and there's a community there. And, and for me, that's very important uh, to, to, to connect with people all over the world. So that, that was one, and that was basically a selfish reason, if, if, if I can be quite honest about that, because that, that was about me. That wasn't about the business. <clears throat> but from the business side, again, it gives us an opportunity to reach a bigger audience that we didn't normally reach. And, and for me, it's the message, it's this whole message of a world free of preventable disease. And the way I can contribute, I've got business skills. So if I want to, to work towards that goal, I can help people put up businesses that do that. So instead of me sitting here and, and do one-on-one -on -one wellness coaching, which I did, uh, but I can only work with 10, 15 people a week. But if I help other coaches to set up businesses, suddenly I can help a thousand people yeah, nice. indirectly. Yeah, good, good. But what, what would you say is one of the most difficult things you faced starting this podcast? You know, because I, I know that when you want to start a podcast, there are always things like <laughs> things that you think about. You want to think about the mic, you want to think about the recording equipment, you want to think about how you want to edit your podcast. So there, there are different things, you know, you, you think about, you know, for you, you know, starting this podcast, you know. What, 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 do you, what would you say is one of like the difficult things, you know, you faced, you know, starting this podcast? I think the most difficult for me thing for me was was actually starting. Um, I, I I've been running with this idea, and I actually went back when we started because we started about six weeks ago. <clears throat> I actually went back and I had a look. Uh, the first time I started studying and making notes was two years ago. So it took me two years to get over, and I think it's fear. I, I think it's fear of putting yourself out there. Um, some people call it imposter syndrome. Uh, it's too fancy word for me. I was just, I was afraid. Uh, and, and, and for me, because, you know, that was, you know, that was the most difficult thing is just getting over that fear. Uh, and I've got a motto that says, if you, if you want to, you know, gray crock, coined the phrase, if you're ripe, you're growing. Uh, if you're green, you're growing. If you're ripe, you're rot. So uh, I was, uh, I was, I was, I always trying to put myself out of my comfort zone, but for me this was a huge shift to get out of my comfort zone and actually, you know, go and sit. And and I started my my first six episodes with solo episodes. Those are terrible things to do, hey? Eh? Sitting there and talking to yourself on a microphone. I mean, it's <laughs> it's scary. <laughs> it is. It is. It is. It is. Tell me about it. It is. It is. It is. You know, for, for me, I I would say you know starting out, you know like you said your fear you know I, I would say my fear was because i i stutter you know so there was a there was a problem of oh how am i going to communicate you know smoothly how am i going to talk to the mm -hmm. guest you know how am i going to you know construct my my points out you know and, and how am i going to you know reach out as well you know communication you know was was the biggest fear for me you know so and there was a period of procrastination as well because when you want to start these things you also, also think about who oh, who's going to listen to you you know how you're going to get yeah. guests you know yeah. how, how you're going to find guests on your show you know but, but like yeah. you really said you know i think the best thing is to start you know which which i started you know i thankfully right now i'm having people like you contact me that you want to you want to come on my show and since then the show has grown and it, it, it's still growing, you know, and, and thank God for where it is right now, you know, but for me, it's just, it's just fun, you know, I'm, I'm right now, I'm not thinking about, oh, I want to make money from it, you know, that, that, that might come later, but right now I'm just, you know, building a community to say, yeah. you know, because yeah. I, I, I interviewed some, some guy way back and he said, you know, if you want to build a business, build a community, which also means building your audience as well. You know, when you, when you have that, I think every other thing will, every other thing will fall in place. I think it will. No, it definitely will. Definitely will. And and it's a slow process, I think. I think, and again, it's a question of not not trying to rush it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're you're, you're right, man. Is it is a case of not trying to, no, not trying to rush it because you you will learn along the way. You know, there'll be so many mistakes. You know, so yeah, mm. definitely. And and when you document those mistakes, you know, you're not gonna make the same mistake again. You know, so so they they yeah. they're gonna be yeah. they're gonna be newer things to learn. You know, and and which mm. we which is great. You know, for me, the the journey and the story has been has 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 been amazing. You know, I've I've gotten loads of you know very very good reviews. You know, so at the end of the day, you know, I'm 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 very happy. I started. 
I wish I started like five years ago, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, there. Yeah. So you, you, you just mentioned that, you know, you, your, your show is a solo show, but do you, do you hope to have guests on it? Yeah, I've started with guests. <clears throat> okay. Um, so, and, and, and the way that we want to format it and I want to format it is just doing little mini masterclasses. So I've lined up a, quite a lot of guests, uh, and again, um, that was part of the procrastination because that's another part of the fear thing. Um, I, I knew a lot of the, the first guests, obviously, is people that I know. Um, but still, you know, um, I haven't got a track record of, of a podcast behind me. I've got a, a lot of other track records. Um, and, and then there's a little thing here in your head that tells you, ah, you know, can you really ask these people to come and share their knowledge with you when you don't even know what you're doing yourself? Um, but yeah, luckily for me, I got over that fear. Um, and going forward, I think most of the <clears throat> the episodes will be this this little mini masterclass format where we're going to take subjects. And and fortunately, because we're so involved in the industry, I can be very picky about you know how I want to and and what aspects I want to teach them about. So yeah, just going to make it a lot of fun. You know, it's 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 such fun of being an entrepreneur, especially today. You know, there's so many so many opportunities and so many things that we can do. You know, so yeah, we're just gonna have fun with this. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, Didi. Um, again, you you know when when you want to start a business, you know, right now you you started your business, you know, and that is going well as well. You know, but for People that want to start business, there's always this thing of, oh, you want to start a business, you, you, you're an entrepreneur, you know, I think the first thing you do is to have a business plan. But for you, I know you, you want to fire that business plan. You, you, don't, you don't want to even look at that business plan, you know. Yeah. Why do you want to fire the business plan? Why is it that, you know, the business plan does not really make sense to you? Have, having a business plan. Look, it's like anything... Yeah, it's like anything else in, in life. Is is we we hire everything that we do. We hire somebody or something or a product to do it for us, and and the business plan is is an old, outdated thinking thing that comes from corporate, big corporate, uh, where they had business plans and they had, you know, a lot of resources to to invest in drawing up a business plan, and we inherited it as a small business owners and they told us you know you need a business plan and and we agree 100 percent with that you need a plan but the old business plan you just need to fire because it's useless it's not doing its job for you in, in, in your business and it's actually setting you up for failure because you spend a lot of time and and you know you do a lot of projections and you've got this marketing plan worked out and you've got and and all of that is you know, just thumb sucks. It's a lot of hypothesis that you, and assumptions that you put on paper. And it looks so good that you get all excited and you know, you show everybody this nice business plan. You say, just look at my business plan. And the problem is it's a 50 to 100 page document. Nobody reads it, nobody gets excited about it. So we just say, it, 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 yeah, it's like your old cell phone. If it's not working anymore, just fire it upgrade get a new one and that's what that's what we teach our entrepreneurs just dump it down there's basically nine tools that you can use and it's very much easy and all of them are one page tools uh, and you start with your vision where you want to go um, you build out a business model and you do practical you know weekly yearly monthly daily practical business planning operational planning things that you can actually apply and things that can get you and everybody around you excited about this business that you're in. Um, so to, 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 to just summarize that, fire the business plan, but don't fire business planning per se, because you still need to plan. You need to have a strategy. Uh, <laughs> it's just the format, the, the how, how we do it and the when we do it that we say there, there's, there's easier ways uh, and there's more practical ways to do it than that formal business plan. Yeah, absolutely. Because I, I, was about, I was about to come to that now. I was about to ask you, you know, if you fire the business plan, you know, so how, how do you guys structure? You know, you, 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 you've, you've just answered that anyway, because some people would, would argue for, you know, you needed a business plan. Some was, now you're telling me you don't need a business plan, but some would say, I need one to, to, to have that structure. 
you, yeah. you know, but you rightly said now, you know, that if you fire the business plan, you know, you, you also have a, you also have to have that planning as well, you know, because with, without the planning, there will be no structure within the, within absolutely. the business. Okay. Yo, absolutely. Yo, absolutely. So, yeah. Um, and, and again, uh, I, I, and I've said it already, I, I believe in every entrepreneur as individual. Uh, so, but the, the basic tools are the same. So you start with your vision. You need to have that, that big vision of where your business is going. And then we break it down. Um, and, and what you actually need to do is the first thing is th that big vision, big vision, and we call, call it the behalf, a big, hairy, audacious vision. That's the moonshot where you want to be in, in 10 or 20 or 100 years time. Uh, and you make that as big as you can. And then the next step is, is you break it down into, at the most, three years, 36 months. 36 months is tangible. You, 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 can, you can wrap your, your hands around that. Other people will say, five years or 10 years. I said, don't, don't go there. I think if, if COVID have taught us all one thing, life changes in, in a month. Um, so then all those 10 year plans are out of the window, they're gone. Um, so once you've got that three year plan, we break it down into a one year plan. So we say to ourselves, what do we need to do in the next year to, to reach the three year plan? And then from that, we go into a, a 12 week plan. So we say to ourselves in the next 90 days, what are the three main priorities that I have to achieve to get to my one year plan? And then we break it down again. This next seven days, what do I need to do? What's my three main priorities to reach my three, three months plan? And that's my first domino. So if I can hit that domino, all of them, all of them go. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of tools that we use to, to build around, you know, like the business model canvas. Uh, and the business model canvas actually includes your marketing plan. So we, we, you can add a lot of detail, but it depends on the entrepreneur. If you've got a simple coaching business or running a herbal shop, you don't need all these fancy business planning and strategy tools. You need something that's tailor-made for your situation, your clientele, and that you can use this week to put bread on the table and to the next week, you know, grow a little bit bigger and grow a little bigger and grow a little bit, a little bit bigger. Absolutely, you know. But, but what would you say, what would you say are, are the best systems to implement, you know, to grow your business? We, we always start, and again, the, the systems that you need to imp implement will depend on where you are and what stage you are in your business. But everybody needs, basically needs three systems. First of all, you need profit systems, you know, systems that drive profit. And th those are things like your strategic planning. Those are things like your, your marketing. And those are things like your capability building. In other words, how do you build your influence? How do you build your authority? Those are the profit drivers. And then the next that you need is you need your revenue systems. And revenue systems, basically just three. The first one is client fulfillment. And again, that's the end. That's how you produce results in your business. Then you need your marketing or what we call the, the, the lead generation. And then you need lead conversion, that's the sales. So again, three systems there, but that is, that is what drives the sales. That is the, the front end of the business that your customers actually see. And then underneath those two, you know, your, your revenue drivers and your profit drivers, you need your support systems. Uh, and those are the things that most of us entrepreneurs don't like doing, like keeping the books um, doing the admin, doing the HR, uh, so all those supportive systems, uh, even even things like uh, marketing automation, you know, the technical side of the marketing automation, those are your support systems. So depending on where you are in your business, if you're just starting out, cash is king. So you will focus on systems that produce cash uh, because cash is always king. Even if you've got an old business that's 30 years old, cash is king. Uh, and then, you know, if, you, if you're going on a little bit more progress in your business, you can start thinking about, you know, building your, your assets. Because I think that's one of the most important things that we neglect as business owners is we forget that we need to leave a legacy behind as well. Uh, you need to leave something behind for your children or your grandchildren or your wife or, you know, spouse or whoever. So uh, we focus a lot of also on building assets so that when, when it comes to a time that you want to retire, that you can actually put management in there. And that's where systems are so important. 
or where you can say, okay, can I groom a grandchild or a nephew or a cousin or whomever? Can I groom somebody else to take this business over while I semi-retire? Uh, and those are the, you know, again, where your strategy comes into play. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking as, a, speaking, speaking as a grandfather, I, 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 I've got experience of this. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Love your answer, man. Love your ability. One of the things we do here is to, we're creating a platform for people that want to go into business so, so they can have an idea on how to run their businesses as well. So it's in saying that, you know, and someone comes to meet you and say, Didi, you know, I, I looked at your business, you know, he- your health and awareness business, you know, and your podcast as well, you know, I, I, like, I like what you do, you know, and I also want to go into business as well. What are the, what are the key things you say to this person? starting out a business from the scratch? Uh, first of all, and, and part of an expression uh, is, is, you know, to, to start a business, I always take off my hat for you, but you have to have balls. And I say that with, with a lot of empathy uh, because everybody that, that goes into business must realize that this is a long-term commitment. Um, so I always, I always challenge people on their commitment because it's not a going into business it's not a get-rich-quick thing. Uh, it's going to take a lot of time. It's going to take a lot of effort. It's going to have an impact on your family, et cetera, et cetera. And once we're over that hurdle, then that's a serious part. The rest is all fun. I mean, and, and then you just start, sit down and, and think about what do you want and what are you good at and what type of results do you love producing for people? Uh, and, you know, if, if you like people, like to make people laugh, and then doesn't mean you need to go become a comedian. Uh, there's other ways to do that. But my advice is always then is focus on something that you want to solve, but focus on the problem. Don't focus on the solution. Because the moment you focus on the solution, you get married in your head with the solution and then you get blinds. And those businesses normally fail because if you're focused on the solution, you're focused on yourself and you're not focused on somebody else. If I focus on the problem, it doesn't matter if my direct competitor is better at that, then I'm still happy. Um, and a good example of that is yeah, Tesla. Um, you know, they've, they've always maintained that if somebody can make a better car, electrical car than them, then they would rather close down the business because they in they in they in that type of business, you know. So they in there for the solution. Uh, I mean the problem and, and not the solution. So that's always my advice, you know. Find somebody there's something that you're passionate about, but not your solution. Uh, it needs to be the problem. Definitely, man, did it definitely. You know, but but what, what what would you say? You know, is 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 one of the best advice you've going so far. You know, starting your business. You know, right now till now. You know, what would you say is one of the best advice you're going so far? You know, I've had so many good mentors. I think the best advice I probably got was um, many many years ago when we started out with with a wholesale growing operation. Um, I realized that we we didn't have the resources, we didn't have the capital and, and, and a herb growing operation is very capital intensive. So I, I realized that if we wanna grow and end up where we want to go, we, we, we just didn't have the financial means to do it. So I decided to go around to the existing growing operations and they were ornamental horticulture. You know, it was people that grow, grew roses and conifers and stuff like that. So I went around to all these existing growers and knocked on their doors and say, you know, just give me, you know, what would you do if you know, most of people couldn't give me advice, but I eventually came to an elderly gentleman and they were pot plant growers. And his advice to me was, was, was quite profound in the sense that he, he sat me down and said, okay, tell me where your business is today. And I said, okay, this is where we are, but we're very small. Um, And he then took me through the steps and, you know, showed me his nursery and said, if you want to go where I am today, you must just realize one thing. Between where you are today and where I am today, it's just a matter of a few zeros at the end. 
And <clears throat> I didn't understand. Uh, and I actually left there quite perplexed. But when I got back home and I told my wife, and she said, man, you, you don't understand. Just phone the guy. And I phoned him and he said, okay, please, I'm sorry. What did you mean by that? And his, his advice was, keep it simple. Keep it simple. Um, and because we always tend to overcomplicate things for ourselves. And we always try to make, you know, we, we believe that the more difficult the solution, the problem we think the problem is, the more difficult solution should be. And that's not true, Casino. Um, the, the, the most profound solutions are the simple things. Um, and being who I am, you know, I always think that the more fancy my solution is, and my, then, you know, the better it is, but that's not truth. So I think the best advice I ever got was just keep it simple. Nice, nice, nice one, Didi. You know, if we were to leave us, you know, we, we, we something to take away from this show, you know, for who, whoever is listening or who will be watching, you know, what would that thing be? Sure. I would just say that um, I think we, we live in an age of, of golden opportunity. Um, and there are basically two types of people. Those that think that, you know, it's all doom and gloom. And those that think that, listen, there is just so much opportunity for all of us. And I would just like to leave everybody with that, that just get out there. Um, forget about, you know, we've talked about our own fears, you know, get past your fears. And really, if you, if you want to change this world uh, and the planet, uh, we all need all the positivity that we can and we all need all the enthusiasm that we can and we all need to just you know roll up our sleeves and get out there and just do it yeah just do it did it man love that man love that love that love that if you guys want to get in touch with you did you know where's the best place for them to get in touch with you they can just go to, to baddestpreneurs.com uh, because it's such a such a strange name, a unique name. If you type it into Google, we've not even been going for a year. But if you type badass preneurs into Google, we'll, we'll be there. Um, alternatively, you know, if they want to connect with me personally, I'd love that. Uh, LinkedIn, that's where I hang out. I'm not in Twitter. I'm not the Instagrammer. But if you go Didi Hoffman, you will find me on LinkedIn. Um, and those, those are the two that I prefer. Nice one, Didi, man. Love every bit of the show. You know, love your journey, your story. You're doing an amazing job. And for you, you know, at this, at, on, at, at this age, you know, you, someone will say, oh, why don't you retire? You know, why don't you leave, leave what you're doing? But, <laughs> but I see that you're still relentless. You know, you're fighting on. You're, you you want to be the badass preneur that you are. And also want to thank you for coming on the show, you know, and I'm grateful as well. <laughs> yeah. Hey, thank you for the opportunity. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's nice to have a brother over there in, in the UK. And yeah, thank you for having me. It was really, it was an honor. Yeah, nice one, Didi, man. Nice having you on the show, man. Nice one. Great. <laughs>